Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a review of the brand new Kylie Skin Sunscreen. I was very excited to purchase this and test it out for you guys on camera because I have never seen a sunscreen like this. It claims to be invisible and colorless. So we will find out if those claims actually hold true. In this video, I will show you guys application clips, reapplication throughout the day. I'll show you how it wears underneath makeup and how foundation applies on top of it. And then of course, we will talk through all of the ingredients so I can give you my perspective there. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on the sunscreen Screen, if it's worth the money and see how it holds up, we'll jump right into this review. All right, so some high level info on this sunscreen. This is a broad spectrum SPF 40 face sunscreen. It has 1.7 fluid ounces of product in it and it retails for $28. I think when everything was said and done with shipping, this cost me $40, which I was like, <coughs> <laughs> that just hits different than $28 for a sunscreen like this. So I'm gonna read their little blurb that they have on their site for this. So they say, our invisible broad spectrum SPF 40 face sunscreen help why? Helps to moisturize, smooth, and protect your face from UVA and UVB rays. It's formulated with shea butter, kiwi seed oil, vitamins A, C, and E for added hydration without feeling greasy. This colorless formula is silky to the touch, ultra lightweight, and fragrance free. We're going to look into that and make sure. And then aside from being fragrance free, this claims to be reef safe and non-comedogenic. Non-comedogenic is not really a regulated phrase. So I'll just give you guys my thoughts on this formulation and if it's safe or not for acne prone skin and sensitive skin. So when I first got this in the mail, the first thing that I noticed that I didn't realize at first, which I don't know why I didn't realize, it makes sense now because this formula is colorless, is that this does not have mineral active ingredients. The active ingredients are all chemical. And when we compare that to the dermatology and color science sunscreens that do have mineral active ingredients, that's where I'm a little bit willing to spend a little bit more than on something that doesn't have mineral active ingredients at all. However, like I said, I have never seen a formulation like this and that's definitely the selling point here. So we will get into all of that, but the active ingredients are 3% avobenzone, 6% homosalate, 5% octisalate, and 6% octocrylene. I quickly want to explain what each of those ingredients does because normally I'm reviewing sunscreens that have mineral active ingredients. And I actually did just post a video recently talking through mineral versus chemical active ingredients, UVA rays, UVB rays, basically everything you need to know there. So I will link that in a card here and in the description box below if you want an update on that. I won't repeat myself here, but avobenzone is a chemical active ingredient that provides us protection against the longer wavelengths of UVA rays. However, it is not a photostable ingredient, which means that it degrades when it's exposed to light, which is not what we want in a sunscreen. Of course, we are using sunscreen to protect our skin from UV rays. So the reason it can still be included in formulations and provide us with some protection is because it can actually be stabilized by other ingredients. Next we have homosalate and octisalate, and both of those provide the same function in a sunscreen. They provide us protection against UVB rays, and they are somewhat photostable, meaning they do degrade somewhat when they're exposed to light, but not to the extent of avobenzone. And then finally, we have octocrylene. That is a chemical filter that provides us protection against UVB rays as well, and also the shorter wavelengths of UVA rays. And that is one of the active ingredients that helps to stabilize unstable filters like avobenzone. So I won't go into the weeds much more there, but I wanted to make sure I was explaining those again because I normally am not reviewing face sunscreens that only have chemical filters. So we are getting that true broad spectrum protection here. We're getting protection against all forms of UV rays, but it's likely not as photostable as a sunscreen with mineral active ingredients. Yes, in theory, we do have ingredients that can help to stabilize unstable filters, but we don't know the extent 
that they can be stabilized, if that makes sense. The other thing that's important to keep in mind with chemical filters is that you have higher potential for stinging and irritation upon application and repeated use than you do mineral sunscreen. So that is also a downside. If you have sensitive skin and acne prone skin, this might be something that you want to stay away from because it may cause issues for you. So with all of that being said, you may be wondering, what's the purpose of chemical filters then? Why would we have a sunscreen that just just has chemical active ingredients. And the reason is that chemical filters are more cosmetically elegant. They're lighter weight, they're easier to blend, they feel nicer on the skin, and they do not leave a white cast, which a white cast is a deal breaker for a lot of people. And I know that there are a lot of you with deeper skin tones that struggle to find a sunscreen that works for you. So that's where chemical filters can be a benefit. However, sunscreens have definitely evolved and while that can still be an issue with sunscreens that have zinc oxide and mineral active ingredients in them, we do have a lot of really nice mineral sunscreens available today that don't leave a white cast, that are not super heavy on the skin, that blend really nicely, but they are harder to come by and they typically are pricier. So right off the bat, active ingredients are a little bit iffy just in the sense that they're not going to to universally work for everybody, but then again, we don't have that many sunscreens that are universally going to work for everyone as is. So keep it in mind if you have sensitive skin or acne prone skin, you may just want to steer clear, but for others, this may work totally fine for you with no irritation. All right, now let's move on to inactive ingredients. So at the top of the ingredient label, we just have a variety of silicones, emollients, and texture enhancers. So all things that are going to help to make this formulation lightweight and silky smooth like it claims and then also help to just condition and replenish the skin. So nothing extremely noteworthy at the top of the label aside from caprylic triglycerides which are a plant extract that serve emollient purposes to help to soften and condition the skin. So really nice ingredient there. And then towards the middle of the label is when we start to get into more of those plant extracts that have further skin conditioning properties. So things like shea butter and jojoba esters, those are really nice nourishing ingredients and then meadow foam estalide which is an antioxidant plant extract that is also going to help to soothe and soften and moisturize the skin the last ingredient towards the middle of the label that i wanted to call out is right here I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I don't remember which one, so I don't know if it's uploaded yet, but I did the same thing because I cannot for the life of me figure out how to pronounce that first word, and I don't want to sound like a total idiot trying to pronounce it. I tried to search if there was a pronunciation on Google, and I couldn't find anything, so if anyone knows how to pronounce that, let me know, but that is an ingredient that is going to help to improve the formulation of this sunscreen, so help to make it more cosmetically elegant, but on top of that, it's really nice because it helps to stabilize unstable filters like avobenzone. So kind of a multifunctional ingredient there and makes me feel a little bit better about that unstable ingredient because we have a couple stabilizers in there. And then at the bottom of the label, we have even more antioxidant plant extracts that are going to help to protect the skin and serve other purposes as well, like hydration. So we have two different forms of algae extract. We have vitamin E and then we also have kiwi seed oil. So while I was very excited to see those included in the formulation, of course I was a bit bummed out that they were at the very bottom of the label, meaning that they're likely not in high enough concentrations to make a noticeable difference on the skin. So that's definitely a bummer because those are some of the key ingredients that are called out on the website when you're going to purchase this sunscreen. So. Is that just an issue with this brand? No, we see that all the time within skincare where a product will have certain ingredients called out and then you flip it over to look at the label and they're at the very bottom. It's not just an issue with this brand, but would love to see those higher up on the label. And then one of those forms of algae is where we are getting that vitamin E. It's actually a source of vitamins A, C, and E. So if you were wondering if there was retinol or something in here, there's not. The vitamin A just comes from one of those algae extracts, but again, it's I think it's like third to last on the label. And that's basically it when it comes to this ingredient label. So this really is fragrance free, thank goodness. No synthetic added fragrance, no essential oils, no fragrant plant extracts that are known to irritate the skin. Oh my gosh, I was very excited about that. I don't know, I just, I always feel iffy when I see that claim. And then when I also see claims about plant extracts and antioxidants, I'm like, 
please don't be essential oils. So that's amazing. And then there are also no additional ingredients that are known to irritate or cause sensitivity or cause allergy long term. So I actually am very impressed by the inactive ingredients that are within this sunscreen. Are they in the very best order so that you're getting the highest concentrations of those really amazing antioxidants? No. It's not the most impressive order-wise, but I'm impressed by the ingredients and I'm impressed by the fact that it doesn't have those irritants or sensitizers. So that's all good. All right, let's talk about the actual formulation of this sunscreen now, which is why I'm sure a lot of you are here. So as you can see, this is completely clear and it really is traceless, invisible, whatever you want to call it. As you start to blend it into the skin, you, I mean, it continues to be clear. You can't see it, it blends in so well. It just feels so, so smooth. It's amazing. And this immediately reminded me of the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. I wanna disclaim that I have not used that in like maybe five years, so it's probably not exactly the same, but that's the first thing it reminded me of. It's that same type of product, that silicone-based feel, very lightweight, very smooth, has that pore blurring, pore minimizing effect. It's really, really nice. So I'm just going to kind of roll footage here, roll the tapes. <laughs> what of all of the applications of this sunscreen because what I just said continues to hold true with each application it felt nice each time when I was reapplying I did not have any issues with pilling or patching or streakiness really nothing it just I mean it continued to be traceless felt so lightweight so I will roll footage for you guys here and you can just kind of see how it performs Okay, and then I also wanna make sure I'm showing you guys what this looks like underneath foundation and how foundation blends on top of it. Before I show you this clip and you freak out, I am fully aware my foundation is way too dark. In my defense, I had self-tanner developing slash I still do. Yeah, I can smell it. Um, so I wanted to use foundation that was a little bit darker to eventually match it. So I tried to go half and half with my fair shade and my self tan shade and clearly my fair shade just did not come through at all. So that's why that looks ridiculous. I'm fully aware, don't worry. I did not think that was a color match for me. So what I did was actually add quite a bit of concealer that was much lighter obviously than that foundation to try to balance it out and fix some of that. So this is way more liquid product on my skin than I would normally wear. But I think that's actually kind of nice because you guys can see that even heavier amounts of product blend really nicely on top of this sunscreen with zero issues. No pilling, again, no skipping or streaking everything was good so now that it's been a couple hours let me give you guys a close-up so we can see how everything looks and how the foundation actually lays on top of this sunscreen so I think it looks really really good I mean per usual with me I say this in every video where I'm doing a close-up like this my natural oils have started to peek through that happens no matter what but I'm not looking oily I'm not looking greasier than normal I would say this probably is going to be something that works really well for you if you have oily skin because especially when it's this warm outside I definitely can start to get oilier and this has controlled my oils pretty well actually I think I look like a little bit I don't know not dry but like textured through my forehead but this is not the most 
hydrating foundation of all time. So I think it looks really good. It does kind of have that pore minimizing effect. You will have to just, if you can even tell, excuse all of the texture I have going on. My skin's been through a lot lately. You guys will have to stay tuned. I'm going to be doing an acne update very soon. It's been through a lot. So, I mean, the combination of me testing out new acne prescriptions with face masks has resulted in a lot of irritation and texture and just not cute stuff, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. So I don't feel that it's clinging on to any of my texture at all. I think it just looks really good. I'm impressed. No complaints. Nothing's breaking up underneath it. What is that? I don't know. It's also just one of those days for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm just like, what is going on with my eyelashes? One of those days where you're applying mascara and your lashes are like, oh, you wanna go left? Okay, perfect, we're gonna go right. So if you were wondering what's going on with my eyelashes, that's what. I don't wanna talk about it. So formulation in my book is a total win. I think this is super innovative. Like I said in the beginning, I have never seen anything like this that has sunscreen in it. I've seen this in a primer, but not a sunscreen. If you guys know of any sunscreens that have this same exact formulation, let us know in the comments below because I don't want to give this full credit on that if it already exists, but... Yeah, so it exists. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you know about this sunscreen and we're watching this whole time like, oh my gosh, who's going to tell her? So as I was editing, I was just looking around to see if anything else was out there like this, and there is. I found the Supergoop Unseen Sunscreen. I just really haven't looked into Supergoop in depth yet as a brand. It's been on my list, but I just did not know that this sunscreen existed already, so I apologize. This Kylie sunscreen is not innovative because it already exists. I still think the concept is cool, but of course it's not totally unique. And I did want to show you guys the side-by-side -side of the ingredient label as well. Kylie's on the left, Super Goop is on the right. The active ingredients are the exact same. There's just different percentages slightly for each of them. And the inactive ingredients are so, so similar too. If there was an ingredient that was within both sunscreens, I highlighted it in the same color so that you could see where it kind of lied on each ingredient label. And for the most part, they are all roughly around the same spot. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of duplication here of ingredients. You guys can clearly see there's a lot of color going on. I was pretty shocked to see that. They're not completely identical, but very similar. So some of those antioxidant plant extracts that we talked about at the bottom of the Kylie label just don't exist in the Super Goop label. But again, they're probably in very small percentages. So the biggest difference I would say aside from that is the price. And I obviously have not tried the Super Goop one, so I can't speak to the formulation or application there, but wow, interesting, right? <laughs> I think it's super nice and I think a lot of you guys are going to be obsessed with this. If you have oily skin, I think this is going to be a huge win. I think it'll work really well if you have normal skin. It could be something that works if you have dry skin on its own. It's probably not going to be moisturizing enough, but if you used it on top of a thicker moisturizing cream, you may really love that combination. If you have dark skin tones, this is going to be slam dunk, home run, sports. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are those the phrases that I use? I really, I feel like I'm stereotypical in that sense. I do not give a flying F about sports. I do not care. So apparently this is going to be a home run slam dunk for you, but I really think it will. And I totally, totally want to acknowledge the fact that even though, you know, the chemical filters may be an issue for some, I don't want to discredit the fact that this is so amazing for people with deep skin tones that have a hard time finding sunscreens that work for them because of that white cast. So that is amazing and kudos to Kylie Skin for that. So final thoughts on this sunscreen. I really think, I mean, I feel like I say this a lot, but I think this is really going to be up to personal preference and what your skin type is, what your skin color is, what you're looking for in a sunscreen. If you're looking for something that has that lightweight silicone feel that works amazing under makeup, I think this is going to be a perfect option for you because it doesn't have a white cast. It, it really doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything. It's kind of crazy. And with each application too, it just feels super lightweight. 
So that's awesome, but I also recognize that this formulation is not for everybody and not something that everyone would want to reach for on a daily basis for sunscreen. So it's gonna depend on if you like that formulation or not. Is this going to be a sunscreen that is my new go-to that I reach for every single day? Definitely not, number one, because I do have sensitive acne-prone skin. I have to be careful with something like this. And number two, I just have other sunscreens that I prefer from a consistency perspective for everyday use. Kind, You know, just kind of as your daytime, you have that little tint to it. Obviously, this is clear and has zero color, and I do love a good tinted sunscreen. So this is something that I'm going to reach for as a primer underneath makeup that also has sunscreen. I think it's amazing for that. And a lot of the times, unless I'm filming, I'm not wearing makeup, but if I am, I'm putting on makeup towards the end of the night. So it's like I really only need that one application of sunscreen and then the sun sets and I don't need to be reapplying anyway. So I think this is perfect for that situation. So you guys will definitely have to let me know in the comments below, what are your thoughts on this sunscreen? Are you going to purchase it? Are you going to totally skip it? Very, very curious. We can chat in the comments below. That's it. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If it was, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell because that really helps me out and supports my channel. And I also upload three to five days a week for you guys, so you don't want to miss out. If there's anything else that you would like to see from me next, leave that in the comments below. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.